Were you a witness to uh, the Jack Ruby uh, shooting Lee Harvey? I was a witness only that I was about behind about three people. In those days, the photographers had these huge cameras, heavy, heavy. So everybody was fighting for a position. I was in the basement, I was behind them, and I did not see Ruby for several seconds after they split, started shooting, you know. But you heard the shot. Yeah, I heard the shot. And it was just, it was just a little plink-like shot. And I'd known Ruby for years. I wasn't too surprised, but never liked him. How'd you know Ruby? Well, he was at the Dallas Morning News and the Dallas Times Herald constantly. He would run little ads about three inches, one column, his strippers. So Jack Ruby owned a strip joint? Yeah, he owned a strip joint and an after hours club out on Oakland also. But I'd seen him, I'd known him. I was probably in his club twice. One time I saw him, he would get mad and, and, and attack people. He knocked one guy down, I don't know what he'd done, maybe, maybe he'd touched one of the strippers or he'd made some kind of remark. Ruby took him and he was drunk and threw him down the stairs and the stairs in that place were like this. They were just, it was, it was steep, very steep. And the guy was hurt. He got up and wandered away, but I never forgot that. Ruby was a show off, but later on he became helpful to me. So you were at all three of the major events. The killing of our president when he was when Lee Harvey Oswald was captured at the theater, and then when Jack Ruby uh, shot him, you were present at all right. three of those. Right. Wow. The kooks and the JFK thing. My dad, my uh, son, died a couple of years ago. Actually, just we didn't know whether he had cancer. He just died. He was only in his forties. He came up to me before he died, and he said. Dad, uh, did you get a, uh, any kind of deal from the government, any kind of payment, you know, for working for the CIA? And I said, sit down, son, sit down. <laughs> Let me tell you how that all came up. <laughs> and this is how you can get entrapped. I was going to Cuba in 82, and uh, you couldn't deal with the Cuban government at that time, you had to go through the Czech, Czechoslovakian government. So I applied for a visa to Cuba. Never heard from them. Six, eight months later, I get a phone call. And then John, somebody, said, uh, you're going to Cuba, aren't you? And I said, well, I don't know. I, I'm trying to, but it's been months and I haven't heard a damn thing. He said, well, you're going. I know you are. And he said, now when you go, you're going to take cameras and stuff like that, aren't you? I said, well, yeah, I always do, yeah, I've been there before. And he said, well now, when you come back, can I get with you and see what you've taken and all that? And I said, who, who are you with? And he said, I'm with the CIA in Dallas. I didn't even know they had a CIA office in Dallas. I didn't either. They had an unmarked door in the big courthouse. And I said, well, look, you're asking me to do something I'm not going to do. I'm a good citizen. When I come back, I'll tell you everything I know or saw, but I'm not going under the aegis of the CIA or I can get my ass killed. And I said, what's your name again? He gave his name, hung up, never heard from him to this day, except that he wrote a note to his superior, Ainsworth will work with us. So now that's been released, and all the conspiracy people say, see, he was a CIA man. And my son saw it on the internet. <laughs>